Welcome to Steve Reads Bible Stories. Reverend Steve Janes reads Bible stories while pointing out keys and principles on how to read the Bible. God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this morning, I'm going to get into believing the greatest law. Something's called a law because it happens every time. The law of gravity works every time. I have an apple and it doesn't go sideways. It just, it always falls down. The law of gravity. Yeah. They call it a law because it happens every time. Well, believing is a law too. And it happens every time. So I thought I'd look at God's word a little bit into the law of believing. If you want to know what's available, you're going to believe. You have to go to God's Word to see what's available. You learn what's available from what God's Word says. And we have to learn it and know it for ourselves so that we can believe rightly to get right results. Right believing gets right results. If we believe wrongly, we, will, we might not get the right results. We won't get the right results. The Bible is the revealed word and will of God. So if you want to know what the will of God is, you have to know the word of God. And we're going to look at some of the word of God this morning on believing. But you know something? I couldn't scratch that topic on a Sunday morning. I couldn't scratch it in a, for quite a while. There's so much about believing in God's Word, but we're going to look at some of the things that's available. In God's Word, God has a purpose for everything He says, where He says it, why He says it, how He says it, and where He says it, and to whom He says it. Pretty neat, huh? So God's Word means what it says. But to receive anything from God after we know what's available is believing. Believing is the how of receiving anything from God. God has precious promises in his word, and we can tap into all of them if we know it from God's word. And what's required of us is believing. You know, we are, you are, where you are today because of your believing. It's true. How do you picture yourself? What do you see yourself? Do you see yourself seeing the promises of God, believing them, and being more than conquerors in every situation? Well, that's what is available to us. And in life, we're always trying to increase in our believing of God's word so that we can tap in to all the resources of the more abundant life that Jesus Christ came to make available. <coughs> Pretty wonderful. So to get started, let's go to 1 John, which is near the back of the Bible, just, for, just a little bit before Revelation. 1 John, we want to go to chapter 5 and verse 14. And this is what it says. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Mm -hmm. See, the first thing is we have confidence in God. And if we ask, that's, that's on our part. We ask. Mm -hmm. We ask in prayer anything according to his will. That's why we go to God's word to see what his will is. He heareth us. Verse 15, and if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. This morning, we've asked for some things. And you know, I know about what happened when we asked for something. He hears us and it can be accomplished for us. Right. It can be accomplished for us. That's the law of believing. We know his word. 
We ask them and we believe that will happen. Go to Romans chapter four. Romans chapter four, right after the book of Acts. Romans chapter four and verse 20 is where we're gonna start. Romans four, verse 20, and it says, and he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. So they found a promise of God's word. He found a promise of God. God told him, he gave him a promise. God's given us promises. I've heard there's over 900 promises in God's word. We get a promise for God, okay? So he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. And that word is pistis in the Greek, believing. He but was strong, strong in believing, giving glory to God. That was a good song, you know, rejoice that Ken sang. Yeah. And we sang it with him. But the thing is, we rejoice because we believe, we ask of, of a promise, and we get it. Verse 21 says, and being fully persuaded that what he promised, he was able also to perform. Pretty wonderful. God's ability always equals his willingness. If God makes a promise, he's always willing to do what he says in his word. So we find the promise, we believe it, guess what? We receive it. Go to Romans chapter 11. We're here in Romans, I'll show you this in another way. In verse 29, it says, for the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. His gifts in callings, says when it says, Without repentance, it means he'll do it. My version says irrevocable. Say it again. The American Standard Version yeah. says the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. He's not going to go back on them. Yeah. I always used to, when I teach this verse, I used to always say, he's not an Indian gift. <laughs> but that's, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, well, I guess you can. I just did. All right. Hey, saying the same thing, go to Numbers. That's way back in the first, one of the first five books. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, I got there. Verse 23. Chapter 23? Yeah, chapter 23, verse 19. Well, I don't think these uh, this teaching is a new teaching. But it's something we need to think about every so often. You know yes. why? Because that's how you receive anything from God is believing. Yeah. Seems like it might be important. All right. What verse again? 19? 19. And it says, God is not a man that he should lie. In other words, man does lie. Yeah. All men are liars, the Bible says. But God's not like that. And one reason people distrust God is because they distrust man. They trust their, their own words. They haven't seen God work so wonderfully. You know what I mean? So they, they distrust it. But here it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? See, God's promise to us is if God says it, that settles it. There used to be a saying, God says it, I believe it, that settles it. That's a good one. It's a good one. It is. Because if we believe it, it's done. Right? Pretty neat. The how of receiving things from God is always believing. Do you believe it? We pray, ask God for help. We get what we pray for, if it's according to the word. Now, if it doesn't come to pass, something we pray for, then we have to investigate why. And we have to be accountable. Is it me? Is it us in our believing? Or is it I'm not understanding something? Those are two legitimate things. Ephesians. 
the Ephesians, the breakfast of champions, some people have said. Mm -hmm. I do think this is a great way to start the morning, every morning, but you, you know, we can't read Ephesians every morning. There's so much of God's word we need to put on in our mind. But in chapter one, in verse 19, it says, and what is the great, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us were to believe? See, we get this exceeding greatness of uh, his power to us who do what? Believe. believe. See, believing is a big deal. We want to, you know what they call us sometimes? Believers. Because we're believers. We believe in the revealed word and will of God. That makes us powerful people. To us, word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. We have mighty power. We don't just have power. We don't just have a, you know, double A <laughs> battery. We got power because when we're born again, we have the Holy Spirit, and that's a power source directly to God through Jesus Christ. Pretty cool. Hey, go to Ephesians chapter 3. Now, this verse is a lot of people's favorite verse. Mm -hmm. Lots of people. 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask. See, we still ask. Mm -hmm. Don't want to ever forget that part of the formula like we ask and or think according to the power that works in us we got holy spirit we've got the power here's the truth we got the power <laughs> i mean it's really cool to investigate this a little more let's go to mark chapter 11. So many things are accomplished in our lifetime by believing, by believing a promise of God. And in verse 22 is where I want to start. You could read this whole chapter. It's a great chapter. But verse 22, and Jesus answered, answering them, said unto them, have faith in God or believing in God. A simple translation of this is believe God. You receive God's word, believe it. Is something going to come across our paths this week where we're going to need to believe God? Yep. Then do it. And you know what else? And it's been talked about in this fellowship. And when we run across people that need this, we can say all things are possible to you. When you believe, it is great. Look at verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, when I look at just that first phrase, whosoever, whosoever means whosoever, believer and unbeliever alike, if they believe and they do what? Say. That's a lot like asking, right? Say. Unto this mountain, you know what a mountain is? A big thing. Mm -hmm. Mount Washington is out the back here. It's a big thing. It's a long ways away, and we still see it. It's, it's a big thing. Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and, not, and shall not doubt in his heart, hmm. but shall believe. Is one of the things that you can learn from that phrase is that doubt and believing both happen in the heart. If you doubt, you're afraid, you're worried, that slows down your believing. But if you believe that those things which he says, once again, he says it, right, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, do what? Believe. 
And one of the things you do when you pray is the last phrase here, that ye receive them and ye shall have them. The word shall puts it in the absolute. Shall is in the absolute, have them. You know why? You believe. Believing is the greatest law in the Bible. Because if you believe, you will have it. You know what else it, it tells me? If you pray, you ask God, and you believe, then you got it. Act like you got it. You act like you got it. Pretty neat, huh? I think it's pretty neat. Let's go to uh, Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. I want to look at another one here. And in chapter 2, in verse 13, it says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. See, Paul's praying here. He says, For this cause also thank we God. He must be praying to God and thanking him, right? Without ceasing, because when ye receive the word of God, that's where the promises are, they're in God's word, which ye have heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that do one thing. It's the suit you wear. No. <laughs> well, it's the way you comb your hair. No. Nope. It's the exercise program. Nope. nope. Well, it's the fasting. Nope. nope. Well, it's, what is it? Believe it. Believe it. Pretty neat. And see, they could have said in this phrase, not as the word of men. They could have said, well, that's just Paul. Mm -hmm. Who's that guy? He's just Paul or whatever. But you know what? Paul backed up what he said with the word of God. We can back up what we say with the word of God, the word that we know and believe. Lots of times when I pray, I say, God, I thank you for the word that I know and believe. And then I pray for the situation. I just do that. It's kind of fun. Hey, let's go back to Mark chapter 9. We're going to read one in Mark chapter 9. Can't get there. Yeah, I did. In, I'm in Matthew. You guys are in Matthew. Go to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Which chapter? Or what, what? Mark 9. Mark 9. Yeah, Mark 9. We're going to start in verse 14. A lesson here for us. And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway, all the people, when they beheld him, when they saw Jesus, Jesus came into the area where everyone is. They were questioning his disciples. And so Jesus sees this. And all of a sudden, when he gets there, they all run to Jesus and beheld him and were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, the ones that were asking the questions, the religious people, right? He asked them, what question ye with them? What's your question? But you're going to notice they didn't answer. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth and pineth away. That means gets smaller and smaller. He's having a terrible time. Mm -hmm. The spirit is racking and ruining this boy, the son of this man. And I spake unto thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he, Jesus, answering him and said, O oh, faithless generation, or immature believing, or weak believing, how long shall I be with you? 
How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. There's a lot in these questions. Jesus Christ knew he wouldn't be around forever. Jesus said, I'm only going to be, he didn't say this, but this is what he implies. I'm only going to be around for a while. You got to build your believing. You're going to come across these problems and you're going to need to believe the promises of God. How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit teareth him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. Don't just think of this. This is a child, a child that belonged to this parent. And these are the type of things that was going on. And of a child, he gets smaller and smaller. He gets hurt. Look at verse 22. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire. It's even worse than we thought. and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Help us, Jesus, help us. And it says in verse 23, and Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. What was Jesus saying? If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Well, to be able to believe, you first have to know the word of God, the word of God and the will of God. Then you can claim those promises. Here, the son of God, Jesus Christ is saying, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. This type of thing happens to us all the time when we're helping people, when we're teaching them about God and his word, and they go and we tell them the truth. You know what the truth is? All things are possible to you that believe. And they will go, I don't know if I believe. Mm -hmm. We can pray and people get healed. We can pray and people get answers to their prayer. Yes, it is available to those who believe. Mm -hmm. It's still available. Look at verse 25. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he removed the false spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more unto him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore, and he came out of him, and he was as one dead. So much that many said, He's dead. You killed him, Jesus. <laughs> but Jesus took him by. You know, Jesus didn't freak out at that. Right. He didn't go, oh, I didn't mean to. <laughs> he just took him by the hand and lifted him up. And he arose. And when he was come unto the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast them out? Why couldn't we do this? You know why they asked that? Because they had success before. Jesus gave them power. And they, they couldn't do it, and they couldn't figure out why. And he said unto them, this kind. And in my studying of God's word, I... I I wanted to know what this kind was. And in my studying of God's word, this kind is a real tough problem. 
I mean, this was a tough problem. The boy cast himself into fires, tried to destroy himself, wallowing. Even when Jesus tries, is trying to help him and praying for him, things happen. Things physical, things you can see with your eyes to, to slow down your believing. It's a tough one. I think that this kind is a tough kind. And then he says, this kind can come forth, but nothing but by prayer and fasting. And Jesus Christ didn't pray in this situation, and he certainly couldn't fast in two minutes. Right. You know what I mean? What this means is this kind cometh forth, but nothing but prayer, a prayer life of continually praying and asking God to help us in situation. And fasting means a devotion to God. In other words, this kind, this, this kind of deliverance help us, help, happens when you are really concerned about the things of God and you're praying and you're devoting yourself to God. And then when these things come about, then you can do it. Jesus Christ said in, in Matthew, he says, you can say to that mountain and be cast into the sea. A mountain is a big problem. See, there's no problem too big for God. No problem too big for God. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and... Uh, when I first got into God's word, the first few months, and I was really trying to tap into the resources myself, I, you know, I wanted to get, have a job. I wanted to have the more abundant life, but my car was breaking down. I had a hard time finding work. So, and I'm telling a, another believer, I'm saying, I'm not really seeing it. I'm not really seeing it. I'm, I'm praying. I, I took all the classes. I, I'm ready, but I'm having a problem. And this is the record that he read to me. Matthew chapter 6, where it's starting. I'm going to start in verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for he, he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And the mammon is the things of the world. Hey, I got into the word. I started to believe it. I was blessed being with the believers. I had Holy Spirit and I knew it. But you know what? I was trying to serve God because I saw that it worked, but I still had a few feet in the things of the world. A few feet. Verse 25 says, therefore, you can't serve God and the things of the world. Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. You know, this is exactly where I was. I was in a situation where I didn't, I wasn't living the more abundant life. I had, my car was towed away because I thought it was uh, unsafe for the highway. Work was not that plentiful. I needed food and housing. I needed everything. People could have, and some did, would say that I was a bum. <laughs> You're just a bum like us. You know, one guy said to me, and I thought to myself, I'm not a bum. I'm not a bum. I just don't have anything. But <laughs> <laughs> that type of thing. So, I mean, so... This, this section meant something to me as I read it. Verse 26, And behold, the fowls of the air, 
for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? And I thought, well, yeah, I'm not a bird. I'm better than that. But you know what? God had a system for the birds. And I live here, and we get severe winters here, but the birds make it fine all winter long. They do. They, they know how to do it because God has a system for the birds to make. They can get food. They can get nourishment. They can even stay warm and live. Verse 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to, unto his stature? If you really stayed your mind hard, and worked on it. Could you grow a foot? No. Well, never worked for me. <laughs> Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment, for your clothes, what you're going to wear? Consider the lilies of the field, for they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. They do everything they do without working. Yep. And they look beautiful. We're, we're now, we've done it for the last couple of years, are letting parts of our lawn grow so that they can have natural growth. And you know what? They do look beautiful, better than what we could do. Because we tried to make that lawn look good and we could never get it to look good. <laughs> and it looks great, even right now. Verse 29, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little believing, or immature believing. You need to work on your believing. Why? All things are possible to him that believe it. You want the more abundant life? Just stop believing. No, that isn't stop. it. <laughs> Do it. Believe it. Believe it. You want to be healed from something? Believe it. You want to live in a wonderful place and have great friends? Believe it. it, it all things are possible to them that believe. Verse 31 says, therefore, take no thought for yourself, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? And this word thought means mental pressure, worrying about it all the time. Your thought is always, man, I'm just poor. I'm not living the more abundant life. I'm, I need healing. I need my car. I need a place to stay. Wouldn't it be nice to have good friends that I can trust? Things like that. Verse 20, 31 says, Take no thought, mental pressure, saying, What shall I eat? Or what shall we drink? Or with wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. And Gentiles is everyone else. There's believers and everyone else. You know what this is saying? Everybody seeks this. Right. Everybody wants a good life. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants a nice car. Everybody wants a nice home. Everybody wants to have good friends. Everybody wants this more abundant life. You're not the only one. Everybody wants this. Then it goes on to say, for your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. God knows what you have need of. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's the prayer and the fasting. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. The more abundant life. Well, you know what? It's been a long time since I was in that stage when I talked to this other believer. And I saw this and I said, yeah, I got to get, get committed more to God. 
I got to pray and believe God. I got to seek the things of the kingdom of God. I, that's what I've got to do. And I started doing that. And as I started to do that, I grew. I grew in the things of God. And a few years later, I, I had a house. I had a car. I even had a wife that liked me. She loves me. And, you know, things changed. And they changed kind of little at a time. Not like, oh, this happened the next day. But it was like, wow, in just a few years, look where I am. Pretty neat. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, no, it says, take, therefore, no thought for the morrow. I don't think about the morrow too much anymore. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And they are. There is an adversary, and there is things we have to deal with. And when we deal with them, we deal with them with prayer and believing. We pray for help when we need it. We're believing to have it, and we absolutely will have it. It's a promise in God's word, and as we believe it, we'll receive it. It's just, well, I think it's pretty cool. So... Well, dear God, I thank you that we're all believers, God, and we all want to believe your word and act upon it and see abundance come to each of our lives and others, our friends, our loved ones, and people that we get to see. So, God, I thank you for your word and how it affects our lives. And I thank you for us standing on that word and believing it in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com. While there, sign up for our newsletter. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on How to Read the Bible for Understanding and Power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.